meeting. It's probably just telling, yeah, you just want to click it that that's a little thing. Yeah, that's, that's for you. All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today, we're going to have a wonderful culinary demo from Christine Green, and she's going to be making cauliflower tacos, and we're going to learn a little bit about her and why she eats plants. Please welcome her to the show. It's nice to meet you. Hi, Chef AJ. So nice to meet you. Well, I love that your name is Green and you, you know, you, yes. I mean, that's perfect for you, right? Yeah. I married into that name and people, I've I've actually had people go, is that really your last name? And I'm like, yes, (laughs) it is. Well, that's perfect because, you know, go green and all this kind of thing. And you have a company, I'd love to hear all about you. I know you have a company, Simply Plants, but my my first question is, when did you go plant-based? Why? Well, uh, probably a little over 20 years ago, I went plant-based uh, as a child um, into my adulthood. I suffered from severe seasonal allergy allergies. Um, I was on getting allergy shots and taking Sudafed, just all these things. And uh, when I was in my early 20s, in the early 90s, I moved out to uh, Los Angeles and was just introduced to a different lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle. I went out there because I was a professional dancer. And so I remember going to my <laughs> very first audition. And of course, I was, you know, very small and athletic. But when I went to the audition, I saw these girls and they were in amazing shape. I mean, you could tell they were going to the gym all the time. And so that kind of was the catalyst that started um, everything health for me. So I started to go to the gym, working out. I eventually started, uh, doing green foods and, uh, eventually, uh, I met a friend of mine who became actually my teacher and mentor. And she was, um, she had a business in, uh, on third street. I don't know if you know Los Angeles very well called sacred release. And she did colonics and ear coning and all these things. And so I started getting treatments from her and she was an amazing raw food chef. So uh, back then, I feel like it was just the beginning of the raw food movement uh, in Los Angeles. I know you were probably a big part of that movement as well. And so I was really introduced to a lot of different foods as far as um, vegan foods, raw foods, and I really, really loved raw food. So I started doing a lot of uh, detoxes, changing my diet. And eventually I remember just being in my kitchen one day and I was cutting up chicken and I was just like, I don't know. I just couldn't eat it. I just didn't want to eat it. And I know that I felt so much better when, while eating a whole food plant-based diet, not just necessarily vegan, because um, although I'm grateful that the vegan movements becomes as big as it is now, but I feel like there's a lot of junk food out there as well. So everything was always about health and wellness for me. So once I switched, I did probably raw food for about six months, detoxing and everything. And then eventually my allergies were just gone. And I no longer had seasonal allergies and it was, it was a game changer for me. So that's how that started. (laughs) Well, I've heard that before. It's amazing. Is your, is your husband also plant-based? He is, he is, he wasn't when we first met, but, um, for many years I had, uh, dated men that were not, and I found it just didn't work for me. So when I met him, that was, I was kind of like, you know, (laughs) I can't be with a meat eater. So, and, um, he had already had some health issues himself. So actually when he did uh, switch to a whole food plant-based diet, he found that he felt a lot better. Um, we're big mountain bikers. So he, you know, was just excelled in uh, his fitness and, felt better. And yeah, it's been a game changer in that regard. So great. You said you're in Belling in Washington. Is there a large uh, vegan community up there? It's growing. We've lived in Bellingham now for four years. I've moved around a lot in in my life and uh, Bellingham is definitely growing. There's vegan food trucks. There's actually an all vegan grocery store now called Vigos. Uh, It's the first 
It's the, I think it's the first one here. And it's actually the only vegan grocery store in Oregon or Washington. And so, and my, my product is there as well. Um, and there's a lot more opening. There's, um, another gal, she has a, uh, a little, um, sandwich car. And so it's definitely growing. It's very exciting. That's so cool. That's yeah. Nice. Have you written a cookbook? It's funny you say that. <laughs> I was just talking about this last night. Uh, one of my dearest friends and her mom have had a lot of my meals in the past and they keep hinting on to me, you know, we're waiting for the cookbook. We're waiting for the cookbook. So I think that's definitely on the bucket list as far as um, I'm still growing my business, my uh, Happy to Be Granola business. So I feel, I think once that really gets going, that'll probably be the next thing. Yes. Well, that terrific. So what you're going to make us a recipe today that sounds delicious. I love cauliflower. I think it's an underused vegetable, but it's finally getting its day in the sun. You know, I agree. I think cauliflower is, is so good. It, it's rich in vitamin C. It's um, rich in sulforaphane, which is in most cruciferous vegetables. So that's really going to help with it's a potent inflammation killer. Um, and it's also really high in fiber. So it, um, you know, it can, it's great for detoxification as well. So, and that's really important. And it's so neutral. You can do everything from it, from pizza crust to desserts. It really is. And, and this particular recipe, uh, it, even if you had leftovers for it, you know, you can throw it the next day. You can throw it on top of a salad uh, with, you know, dressing of your choice. You can mix it in with um, some rice the next day or quinoa. I mean, it really um can do a lot, you know, you could use it for a lot of different items. It doesn't necessarily have to be for the tacos. So that's what I like about it. Cause I know there's a lot of people out there that do meal planning, um, or, uh, kids. So they really need to be on top of things. And it's very easy to, uh, make. And I always suggest, especially if you have a family that prep the night before and put it all in the fridge. And basically all you need to do is heat up your tortillas, and bake the cauliflower and you're ready to go. Yeah, oh, so the cauliflower is baked, I like that. Yes, it's roasted. And, and another thing about this particular recipe, you can do it oil-free. I do like to cook with olive oil. I think it's probably my Italian roots, but, um, but it, the whole recipe can be made oil-free because I know a lot of your followers are on weight loss programs and oil free. So I wanted to make sure that, um, I had it prepared for you, uh, either way. So, well, thank you for that. Yes. We yeah. like to have options. Yeah. So basically you're going to start off with a, um, head of cauliflower and you're going to chop it up into small little florets, probably like this. I'm sure you can see this right here. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a half of a red cabbage and uh, slice it thinly. I use a mandarin, but not everybody has one so that you can get a really nice thin slaw-like. And uh, also too, red cabbage is also very high in sulfur thing too. So it's great for inflammation, for fighting inflammation right now. So that seems to be a big topic for people. Um, and then the next you're going to do is you're going to have some fresh cilantro leaves, some finely chopped red onion, as much as you'd like. Now, in the cauliflower, when I mix it up, I use two tablespoons of olive oil. But like I said, you can omit the olive oil. You're going to use a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, two teaspoons of cumin powder, two teaspoons of turmeric powder. Now in the recipe, there is a half a teaspoon of smoked paprika and some black pepper. Some people don't like very spicy foods, so it's okay to omit that if you need to. 
Uh, I do encourage you to use the black pepper, even if it's just a little dash, because the turmeric is an anti-inflammatory as well. And we, we need that little bit of black pepper just to activate those uh, anti-inflammatory properties in the turmeric. And then you can use a pinch of Himalayan salt or sea salt. If you're somebody who does not use salt in your diet, you can omit the salt, but I always suggest to add some more seasoning because the salts really, as you know, they really bring out the flavors, the spices. But if, like I said, if you're somebody who is on a salt-free diet, then you can omit that and add some extra spices. Now, personally, when I cook, I don't measure my spices. I just kind of and I'm sure you probably do the same often. You just, you're so used to making things and you're just kind of like a little tasting, a little bit of seasoning. So I really encourage people uh, to try it this way. But then if you like, you know, you love turmeric, you just want it well seasoned with that. By all means, add more. Same with cumin. Some people really like a lot of cumin. Add that or if you want it to be spicier. And, and just play around with it because um, cauliflower is just, I mean, anything you put on it, it's just amazing. So, um, and then what I like to use is a, uh, the coconut, these coconut flour tortillas. They don't have any oils or seed oils in them, which I really like. Um, I know that uh, seed oils are getting a lot of press these days. <laughs> so I try to minimize my seed oil intake because it has been shown to be an inflammatory. Um, so I love the coconut flour. There's also another brand called Siete, which has delicious, delicious tortillas. They're gluten-free and grain-free as well. And they're made with a cassava flour. Um, they're also... They also have one that's made with almond flour as well. So the, I really highly recommend those. There's another brand now, I think it's called Mikey's and they have a cauliflower one. So there's really a lot of companies. I think Siete kind of started the whole uh, grain free outside of, uh, cause usually there used to be like brown rice tortillas but now you can get them actually grain free if you're somebody who practices maybe a keto diet or just don't do well with grains in general. So those are really great options. Uh, what I do recommend though with the flour tortilla, the coconut flour tortillas is that they do when you heat them up like you normally would with a tortilla. I just like to flip mine. You know, you could put it on a medium heat and just flip them around. Um, so they become a little more pliable. But the coconut flour ones, you have to be a little careful with the heat. This is very quick because they tend to get a little hard. So you want to make sure that it becomes a soft shell so you can get all that delicious food inside that tortilla. And sometimes I'll just leave it like these. I heated them up earlier and I'll just um, put a uh, top on top of it and it keeps it, you know, the steam keeps them warm and, and pliable as well. So um, I will be using an avocado. I love avocados. Um, I try to use them seasonally. I, I try to do as much seasonal food as possible. The other thing I have uh, that will be in there is the uh, is some cut up lime for the end. But also too, oftentimes when I go to the grocery store, I'll forget to grab a lime because I'm so used to buying lemons and I'll only have a lemon in my refrigerator. So a lemon works perfect as well. The other thing, which I think it's probably my favorite food ever, I guess you could call it a superfood, and that's microgreens. Microgreens um, have a high concentration of prebiotic fiber, uh, so it stimulates growth with beneficial microbes in your digestive tract. It's also high in iron, zinc, magnesium, antioxidants, calcium, vitamin A, and so many more. So if, say you just had a day where you're so busy, you don't have enough time to eat greens and, and think, I just take a handful and they're delicious too as well. So I really like to use these on the tacos as opposed to say lettuce, but you can use lettuce as well. The shells are a little smaller, um, but you could go the burrito route. So this way you can add more, uh, lettuces and microgreens and those kind of things. But today we're not going to be using that. 
So I do have already baked. You're gonna, oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, you wanna preheat your oven at 425 uh, to 415. It depends on your oven, it varies. You know your oven better than anybody. Some people, their ovens are spot on and some they just run a little less heat than others. So, but I always say 425 uh, to preheat. After you mix all your ingredients, it's gonna look like this, your cauliflower. And then you're gonna bake it for about 20 minutes, depending, like I said, on your oven. Uh, I recommend turning them, uh, checking them about 15 minutes, but I set the timer for 20 and then turning them. But you want them to be really nice. I don't know if you can see that. You want them to be really nice and brown. They're you know, really roasted well. Uh, also, too, since we're coming into the, I know you're in California, so it's, you probably are, you can grill year round there. But here in Bellingham, our spring weather is just starting to kind of creep in. So people are breaking out their grills. And uh, by all means, you can grill the cauliflower as well. You can use, you can also use the, um, the cauliflower as a steak by just, cutting it into quarters and using the same exact ingredients. And then you can um, sear them. If you have a cast iron skillet, that's a great way to brown them. And then you can use sauces. You could use the sauce that I'm going to use on it, or you can use a different sauce. It just depends. I'm so sorry about the foam ringing in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Shut it off. <laughs> so in the uh, slaw, there is a, um, I like to use either Veginase or Primal Kitchen avocado mayo if you're, if you're not doing oil free. Uh, the avocado oil obviously is going to be a better quality oil, um, but Veginase is, uh, it's a little thicker. And then you're going to use about a dollop or a tablespoon and then a teaspoon of sriracha with it. Now this recipe, if you're doing oil-free, you can use cashews. You're gonna take about a cup of cashews and soak them in some boiling hot water for about five to 10 minutes, drain them. And then in your high power blender, you can blend it up with some water, a little bit of apple cider vinegar or lemon, a little salt. And you can substitute that for the veginase uh, or the vegan mayo. Also too, with the sriracha, if sriracha is too hot for you, you can omit the sriracha as well. Or if you like the sriracha, you know, you like it a lot, you like it really spicy, you can add more than a teaspoon of the sriracha to the slaw. And you're just gonna mix it up and it'll look like this after, right here. And so then we're gonna start to build our taco. Uh, uh, Christine, somebody's asking what the what is on the left side of your sink. Is that a Berkey water filter? It is. I love our Berkey. I highly, highly recommend getting a Berkey. Yes. Do you have a Berkey? I do. That's why I thought it was a Berkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the Berkey. It's it's um it was definitely a great investment. I, I highly recommend it out of all the filters. I would love to get a filter for the whole home, but right now we have the Berkey and then we've got our shower head filtered as well. So anyhow, so we're just going to slice up the avocado so we have it ready. I wonder if you could put the cauliflower in an air fryer. I have been so curious about those air fryers. I have not gotten one yet, but everybody I know that has one loves it. So you probably could put it in the air fryer for sure. So you're gonna take some cauliflower and add a little bit of cauliflower in there. Then you're gonna take some of your slaw, just put that right on top of the cauliflower. Mm -hmm. 
and then some red onion. Some cilantro. I love cilantro. I can't wait to start my garden. I always grow cilantro in the garden. Then a little bit of microgreens right on top there. I'm going to slice up a little lime. Squeeze just a little lime on top. I love lime. I, I, most of my dinners have a, a wedge of lime to just squeeze over whatever it is, especially because I don't use salt. It just makes things just pop. It does. It really does. I, I, I know a lot of people often say, well, how do you cook without salt? And, I, and there's so many different ways to substitute salt and, and oil as well, really. So, and then, you know, then you have your little That looks delicious. Thank you. They are really good. I want to eat it right now. I wish I could give you one. <laughs> yeah, I wish there was a way to do like smell a vision or taste a vision. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, give it time. I'm sure they'll come up with that sooner or later. <laughs> this is an example of like the kind of thing you make like for dinner most nights. Like, what would you have like a repertoire of certain recipes you like to make on a weekly basis? I definitely make these on a probably weekly, bi-weekly basis. Um, I also, uh, my husband's a really huge fan of soup. So I like to, I love to make ramen. Um, coconut curry soup is another favorite. And I do have an amazing lasagna that I like to make. I don't know if this is possible, but people are asking if you could put the camera down, which I think is your phone, so they could get a better shot of the food. And I'm sorry, I didn't see the camera. Oh, unfortunately, like I, I'm not able to because it's on an iPad mini, but I'm going to. Oh, you have to talk when you're showing it so it diverts to you. Oh, okay. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not un unable to tip over my iPad, but I'm hoping that they can see this. You can see the food there. Is that better? That looks amazing and delicious. It's very delicious. And I really feel like, I mean, with cooking for me, it's really um, not just about taste, but also about nutrition. That was really important when I, when I really started getting into to cooking. Um, I really wanted to make things that were nutritious. My first cooking job ever um, was for somebody who was preparing for heart surgery. Um, and that's how my whole culinary experience started. Uh, I had a friend who was a personal trainer and she had a client that was in need of somebody to cook for her or a chef of some sort. And, um, and that could cook healthy, nutritious meals to help her prepare for her pre and post operation for open heart surgery. And so I was like, well, I can do that. And, uh, then I started cooking for her. She went through her surgery. It went really well, actually better than they uh, had anticipated. And then I cooked for her a little bit longer and then she kind of, you know, she went off on her own and, um, it was such a great experience. And I thought, I just want to continue doing this. And, teaching people that you don't have to sacrifice uh, taste for nutrition or nutrition for taste. I feel that uh, sometimes veggies get a bad rap that way. You know, people feel like, oh, well, if it's healthy, it's just not going to taste good. So um, that was really important to me. Very nice. What do you eat for breakfast and lunch usually? Uh, for breakfast, I might make a smoothie, um, some, or maybe some oatmeal with peanut butter and, um, I'll throw hemp seeds in it, maybe a, uh, trail mix and some fresh cut apples. That's really my favorite go-to right now. <laughs> uh, and, um, or I, I really enjoy having the coconut, uh, tortillas, and making those, uh, heating those up and maybe putting some peanut butter in it or almond butter or a smoothie. There's so many things you can eat for breakfast being vegan, I think. You could eat, I could eat those tacos. I mean, I, I don't, I, I like savory food in the morning. So that would be yeah. my choice. 
Yeah, you could definitely eat that in the morning for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Do you have an instant pot? I do. I don't know how I did without it before. I mean, it's just, it's such a great way to uh, make beans and legumes. Um, it's just great. But plus, it's easy. I mean, especially for people with families, you just, you know, throw the water in and it cooks, it stays warm and you just drain it when you get home and you're ready to go. I know. I don't know. How, it's like once you have an instant pot how, and, and also I feel the same way about the air fryer. How do you live without it? So here's a question from a live viewer named Marianne. What do you think about lemon versus lime? I'm a lime girl. I mean, I don't dislike lemons, but I prefer Meyer <laughs> lemons. But if, if, if you give me a choice of lemon versus lime, I'm taking lime. I think I'm a lemon person. I really like lemon. I use, I, I mean, I really enjoy lemon water as well. I probably don't use limes as much. Really? I love limes because I find that they're sweeter. They are. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Are you, do you like to exercise? Oh my gosh. Yes. I love it. Uh, my husband and I actually moved to Bellingham because we we're big mountain bikers. And this is the epicenter of mountain biking in the U S I think it's great. And we wanted to be close to uh, British Columbia Whistler because that place has amazing mountain bike riding. And so uh, once I turned 50, I knew it was really time to up my fitness level so I started doing, I started incorporating, um, strength training and that has been a game changer for me. I recommend any woman, why don't I go to everybody to do strength training, but especially women over 50, I feel that, um, you know, it's really great for your bones, your posture, your balance, your mood, you know, because our hormones, our hormones are going through so many different changes uh, midlife that it's really helpful. So I'm really big on strength training and I also have a spin bike in my house. So, you know, living in the Pacific Northwest can, it's very rainy, uh, during the winter time. So if I can't get outside and ride, then I'm on my, uh, spin bike inside spinning. What bike do you have? I have a spin bike as well. I love it. I don't, you know, I'm not sure of the brands. I can't remember the brands. I mean, it's not a Peloton. <laughs> Me neither. I have something called the Kaiser because that was the one they had at all the gyms and I just got used to it. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I, I love that spin bike. And it's really, I mean, and both of them too have definitely um, improved my riding for sure as far as the climb because I was, I, I was not really a great climber. I started mountain biking much later in life. So uh but it's, it's definitely improving with the strength training for sure. Very nice. You want to talk about your company and what you do at Simply Plants? It's a great name. It's got a Z. I put the link to it below in the show notes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, uh, when my husband and I first moved to Washington State, uh, I wanted to start um, kind of not eating as many grains as I was eating. A lot of as vegans, oftentimes we tend to eat a lot of grains and not that I'm uh, poo-pooing grains by any means, but uh, just for myself, I felt like I needed to just kind of back off of them. And uh, I do enjoy granola in the morning or more so as a snack. And I was looking for a grainless granola. Uh, I do not do any, I don't like sugar. Uh, unless it's a natural sugar, of course. So when I was looking for a uh, granola, I found that, I mean, everything had sugar in it, even the ones, I mean, of course, the ones that tasted good too. So I found one that was grainless and it didn't have any added sugars to it, like white sugar or even coconut sugar. And it was really good, but it was still just too soft and kind of, I don't know, there was just something missing. And so I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll just make my own. And I started researching recipes and I uh, have worked with some raw food chefs in the past. So I'm very familiar with dehydrating and um, I do like to use the dehydrator. So I um, decided to just use some nuts and seeds and 
uh, dates and a little bit of maple syrup. And I created a grainless granola that's dehydrated. Uh, I don't think you can really consider it raw necessarily because I believe it has to be under 105 degrees, but mine is, I think at 145. So they come in little squares and they're called uh, Happy Hippie Granola Bites. I don't know if you can see that pretty good. And uh, so I created the granola just for us to have and it just evolved into this business because I was just giving it away to friends and family and they were like, this is really, really good. Um, and I wanted to make sure that the product was all organic and that it was something that was healthy for you to eat. You know, there's a lot of protein in that granola with the seeds, nuts and seeds in it. So dehydrating just made sense to me. So I could keep most of the nutrients in it as opposed to baking. And so the other part of it was uh, that it was really important for me to have packaging that was good for our ecosystem that wasn't going to, um, you know, I didn't want plastic or anything like that. So because it's a dehydrated product, you really need to make sure that there, anybody who's ever had any experience or in, eaten raw food, you really need to make sure that there's no, um, um, any kind of moisture getting into the product. So, but I also wanted to have an eco-friendly eco packaging. And I found this company called Elevate. Uh, they're in the United States and they make biodegradable and compostable packaging. So that's why with my granola, you won't see, there's no uh, little window there to be able to actually see the granola because uh, I just couldn't find an eco-friendly packaging that was gonna keep the moisture in. So I went with this particular one. So all you have to do is peel off the sticker and you can put it in your compost pile or you can recycle it. So that was really important to me to make sure that that was a part of it outside of being a healthy, all organic uh, snack. And so I've created that and it's been doing really well. I'm very excited. It's still growing. I also have a, uh, a taco crumble that I'll be coming out with soon. I've had it on the shelf for a while. I just wanted to start with the granola first. So you can be looking forward to that as well. And that's something you can use. It's made with walnuts and it's seasoned like taco meat, but it tastes delicious either as a taco, you can throw it on salads. So that's another product line. And then I'm just doing some, um, I'll I occasionally do some private events, some pop-up events, cooking, and that's pretty much what we've been up to over here. Nice. Uh, Marion says, I'm new here. What is raw vegan versus cooked? So, Raw means that nothing is cooked over, I believe it's 105 degrees and it's cooked in a dehydrator. And what the dehydrator does is that it cooks it by taking out all of the moisture. So oftentimes you'll see dried fruits, they're usually dehydrated, um, but there's all different kinds of things you can make with a dehydrator. You can actually make tortillas, um, I believe you, you have a cook, isn't your cookbook, your new cookbook on, is Unprocessed. it? I have, I have some raw and some cooked in there. Okay. So, um, yeah. And there's a lot of raw food cookbooks. I love Alyssa Cohen. She's a wonderful raw food chef. I, I love her. She was my, really my introduction as far as learning how to cook. Her recipes are amazing. Um, it's definitely more time consuming. I'm not going to lie because <laughs> your things have to stay in the dehydrator for usually like 10 hours or more. Um, and there's a lot of different components um, when you are using the dehydrator. I was lucky. Uh, I was exposed to so many great, great raw food chefs in California. Um, but yeah, so that's basically, so what that does is it makes sure that it's keeping all of the nutrients in your food when you dehydrate because you're not heating it. And once heat hits um, your food, 
it starts depleting it of vitamins and minerals. Whereas when you're using it in a dehydrator because it's dehydrated, there's no, it's a slow, slow, low heat. Yep. Nice. Very good. Do you, where do you like people to follow you on Instagram? Yes, I do. I, I like Instagram. I, I do do Facebook, but I tend to be on Instagram more. And you can find me at Simply Plants with a Z on Instagram. That's why I'll, I'll put the link right below in the show notes. Okay. Nice. Do you have any groups up there, like uh, meetup groups that are that where you guys meet for like plant-based potlucks or anything like that in Bellingham, Washington? Usually at my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to know if anybody from Bellingham's watching. I, I love having people over. I love to entertain. My parents were really big on entertaining. And, and that's basically where all this culinary, everything started. Because my parent, my mom is an amazing cook. My dad was a great cook. Uh, he was definitely known for somebody who could go in the refrigerator, see what leftovers are available, what's in the refrigerator, and just make something out of nothing. And it always tasted incredible. Um, and, you know, uh, they, my dad really liked to experiment with different types of foods. I mean, I can remember as a kid, he was saying, you know, don't, don't make any plans on Sunday with your friends. We're going to make Chinese food. And so being from an Italian household, uh, there was oh, more is better <laughs> when it comes to food. And so we, I remember making Chinese food and we made egg rolls and I swear we had egg rolls in our freezer for a year because we made so many of them. And so my, you know, my dad really, really enjoyed that as well. And like I said, my mom was an amazing cook. She was known for her lasagna. She still has the best marinara sauce I've ever had. I, even if I make it right to the T of her, of her recipe, it still just doesn't taste the same for some reason. What do you think the secret of her sauce is? Her great energy, maybe, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what is she's been making it for decades. You know, she, anytime they would entertain, she would make, I mean, she eats um, a lot more vegetables and, and more plant-based now. She still does eat a little meat, but back then when we were, I grew up in the Northeast in Connecticut and it was just, you know, Italian American household, it was like sausage and peppers, lasagna. And so, and she would make cater the any kind of party they would have i mean she did all the catering and people would rave about her food so i got really lucky i had a good start <laughs> were you able to get anybody friends or family to go plant-based my sister is predominantly plant-based. i wouldn't say she's a hundred percent she does have fish on fridays but that's it so she, and she's done really, really well on it. My mom is definitely eating more of that, um, especially when my sister and I are around, because that's basically what we're cooking. And uh, my mother-in-law, when I first met her, um, I had some weight issues and I said, well, let's, you know, let's get you on a plant-based diet. You know, I know you can lose the weight, whole foods, plant -based. And so um, I started teaching her some things and she drops, I think maybe, gosh, I don't even know, like 70 pounds doing that. I don't think she um, has continued it, um, but she's def, you know, she has maintained her weight. So I feel like it, definitely for weight loss, for health, it's really a great way to go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for being vegan and for your husband and for the work you do. Thank you. you. Do you teach any cooking classes? People are asking. Do I teach cooking classes? Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I don't have any set cooking classes, but uh, sometimes I will, I'm asked if I can come and teach a class. So I am definitely open to that. Um, I've had people come to my house to teach them uh, cooking classes. I, uh, but this is the first time I've ever done anything on a Zoom. So well, you did great. Yeah. You did great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and next, the only thing I would say is if you continue to do it, find a way so that we can see the food, whether that means a tripod, yeah. there's got to be a way because everybody does, uh, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of people find a way either with their phone or their iPad to just kind of tilt it on a, on a yes. something. Yeah. Yes. 
that would be my, that would be my, <laughs> only, my only suggestion. Well, thanks so much. It was such a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for sending us some granola bites. Appreciate it. And uh, I love the packaging. I love Thank it. you. So great meeting you. I've been a fan for a very long time. So well, I appreciate it. This is what this is what it looks like, guys. Look at that. They're almost like little, little, almost like a cracker in a way, but a sweet. Yes. Cracker. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Christine. It's so nice. Thank to you. you. Have a great day. You're thank so you. welcome. The recipe looks amazing and it's on your Instagram page. I could, so I'm directing people in the show notes yes. to go over there to look for the recipe. Yes. If, you, if you scroll down, you'll find it or you can just message me and I'm happy to send it. Thank you so much. And thanks all of Thank you for watching you another too. episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another wonderful cooking demonstration from Jacqueline Jones from the Soul.